the Prophet said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a person, not a system, no, 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 a person, and endowed that person with awesome power and awesome versatility and a PhD in deception. Who is it? Dajjal. He's known as Al Masihu Dajjal. Why? Because when he's released into the world, his mission is to impersonate the Messiah. Since the mission of the Messiah is to rule the world from Jerusalem, Dajjal, in order to successfully fulfill that mission of impersonating the Messiah, will also have to rule the world from Jerusalem. In order for him to do that, there is an elementary logical deduction. For him to convince the Jews that this is the real thing, that this is indeed the return of the golden age, the Jal will, number one, have to liberate the Holy Land of non-Jewish rule. He did that already in 1919 while we were either sleeping or eating halwa. <laughs> Number two, Dajjal will have to bring Banu Israel back to the Holy Land, not as tourists, but to reclaim the land as theirs. He did that already. Between 1919 and 1948, Banu Israel were allowed to return to the Holy Land. Prior to 1919, the Ottoman Islamic Empire prohibited the return of the Jews to the Holy Land in any capacity other than that as tourists. In 1948, it is Britain which presides over the birth of the State of Israel. Power being transferred in the night mysteriously without any legal instrument of transfer and the State of Israel is born. This is the first time in European history, that there is a transfer of power from a colonizer to a new state after decolonization without a legal transfer of power. First time the state of Israel is born this way. And so my answer is the state of the state, the island of Britain is the, is the island of Tamimudari. This is my answer. Remember, you don't have to agree with me. If you differ with me, however, you should correct me and tell me which is the correct island. When you do so, you must provide the evidence which supports you. And then came the transfer of power from Britain to the United States. In order for that transfer of power to take place from Britain to the United States, we not only had to demonstrate the superior military power of the United States, which took place in the First World War, while well, Britain was losing the war, but secondly, that the United States now has control over money. And so the Bank of England goes into the background and the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank now assume the position of controlling the world of money. When the United States became the ruling state in the world, again, that was strange because who are these? These are a bunch of people who migrated from a number of European countries to form a new country out there across the ocean, very far away. And that United States of America should now become the ruling state in the world, replacing Britain, is something also extremely strange, difficult to explain, except with the Ahadith on Dajjal. Now, while the United States of America is the ruling state in the world, we notice this strange and mysterious relationship with Israel. Huh? That the United States is defying all kind of rationality to feed Israel, to support Israel, to cause Israel to become stronger, to transfer military technology to Israel, some through the back door, some through the front door. Hmm? And so Israel grows while the United States is the ruling state in the world until Israel becomes a nuclear power and a thermonuclear power. Saddam Hussein in Iraq is not allowed to have any weapons of mass destruction. No. 
and the Australian government following faithfully behind Uncle Sam points out is wrong. It is morally wrong to have weapons of mass destruction. Yeah. But the Australian government, of course, doesn't know. Somebody should tell the Australian government about all the weapons of mass destruction that the state of Israel has that the Australian government wouldn't talk about. Surah Al-Baqarah, ayah number 279, 280 and 281. In it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought a close, finale, to a series of revelations which had been coming down on the subject of riba. Now this is the last. And in this revelation he not only completes the subject, he also declares war. Allah and His Messenger now declare war on those who still resist the ban on riba. And if Allah and His Messenger are at war and we are home sleeping, something is wrong with us. If Allah and His Messenger are at war and we are not at war, something is wrong with us. Indicating that it is the obligation of the Islamic State, the Muslim community. It is the obligation of the Muslim community when once they have control over territory to wage war for the eradication of riba. What is this riba? And why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chosen to send down this revelation as the very last revelation to come from him. The first one came to Adam alayhi salam. <laughs> and since Adam alayhi salam revelation has been coming down for imma yatiyannakum minni huda. From time to time revelation will come from me to you. And true indeed they came. Until eventually the last prophet came. And now revelation is coming down in the last book the Qur'an. And now in the last book, this is the last revelation. Why did he choose the subject of riba for the last word from him? The answer very clearly is apparent in his declaration of war against riba. The answer is that herein lies the greatest danger of all. The greatest danger of all. If you allow this door to be opened and the poison of riba were ever to be injected into you, you will be paralyzed and your enemies will be able to take control of you. Do not let this door be opened. Resist riba. After that revelation came down, riba was eradicated in the economy of Medina. He said in the last revelation, if you turn away from riba, وَإِن تُبْتُمْ فَلَكُمْ رُؤُسُ أَمْوَالِكُمْ You are entitled, that is the money lender, to the return of the principal sum which you had lent. On September the 11th, the United States was attacked. We know from eyewitnesses that there were two aircrafts which struck at the Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan. And uh, it could be that the, the aircraft themselves caused the uh, buildings to collapse. It could also be they got some help for some dynamite and so on planting before. <laughs> we know from eyewitnesses that there was a third aircraft which crashed in Pennsylvania. And no less an authority than the White House itself confirmed uh, that that aircraft, the, the plan was for that aircraft to target Air Force One and to target the White House. 
And we have unconfirmed reports because no one see, no one saw, eh? and there was no evidence on the ground. Absolutely astonishing, isn't it? A huge aircraft slams into a building, and there is no evidence that the aircraft ever existed. The Pentagon. Hmm? America was attacked on September the 11th in circumstances which were absolutely suspicious. Who attacked America on September the 11th? And we have said that there is a massive cover-up on the part of the Bush administration. And we have anticipated that those who have information so far concealed, will eventually release that information in order to embarrass the US government as part of a strategy to bring down America. And so CNN is going to be broadcasting it. And the New York Times is going to have a field day. Hmm? And all those who control the media in the United States are now going to go to work to lavishly publish all of this information which demonstrates beyond doubt that the US administration was involved in a massive cover-up. Who attacked America on September the 11th? We used a method. We said, since we do not have the evidence which can be used in a court of law, let us look to see who has benefited. And when we use that, that method of analysis, we have come to the conclusion that the only beneficiary <laughs> of the September 11 attack in America has been far and away the state of Israel. And so now I'm paid my salary in paper. And I am told Imran, this is very convenient. You can, you can put it in your, in your, yes. You can slip it in easily in your wallet. Paper, huh? very convenient. So I got my salary in paper. It could buy a camel. Took it home, gave it to my wife, put it away. Five years later, take it out. Can't buy a camel anymore, can only buy a donkey now. <laughs> Did you hear that? Can only buy a donkey now. My one month of sweat is now reduced. Only two weeks have been kept in the money. And two weeks of my sweat has disappeared. Is this permissible in Islam? Allah speaks in the Quran in connection with a prophet whose name was Shu'aib radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Bismillahi awwaluhu wa akhiru. My one month of sweat has now been reduced to two weeks. Okay? What does Allah say about this in the Quran? It's there in the Quran. It's there. But we don't notice it. <laughs> the Prophet Shuaib alayhi salam and the market or the economy of the people of Shu'aib alayhi salam is a corrupted market. There's a lot of ripping off going on in this market. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to it in the Quran and he declares three times in the Quran. Listen to the words. Do not do this. My one month is now reduced to two weeks. Do not diminish 
and make less the value of people's property, people's labor, etc. That is haram. And in that village we have Islam in the form of the jama'ah. It must be one jama'ah. And we have the one amir. And we have sami'ana wa ata'ana, listening and obeying. And we give the pledge to obey, the bayah. And then the Amir enforces the deen on the members of the Jama'ah. Then when you die, you can die with the hope in your heart that I'm not dying in Jahiliya. <laughs> but if I remain in downtown Sydney, huh, living in my home, without any Jama'ah, without any Amir, without any pledge, an obligation to listen and obey, like a flock of sheep scattered all over with any shepherd. When I die, I die with the possibility that I am not dying in Islam. I'm dying a death of Jahiliyyah. And so we say, go and buy land where land is cheap, where there's water, and build a Muslim village. But the first thing that we have about the structure of that village is that it must be one jama'ah. So it cannot be a Salafi village or a Deobandi village or a Barelvi village or a Naqshbandi village or a Tablik Jamaat village. Can you help me with some more? It must be a Muslim village where all Muslims can come together. And they must all come together as one jama'ah with one Amir. Whoever is the Amir, you must pledge your obedience to him. How do you establish your Amir? Well, there are different mechanisms. We can discuss that. It's there in my book, One Jama'at, One Amir. But what kind of Islam are we going to have in this village? Huh? Will it be Salafi version or will it be Deobandi version? Or will it be Tablik Jama'at version, uh, Wahhabi version? Which one? <laughs> A big question. The Prophet said, Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam, I leave behind me two things. So long as you hold on to them, you'll never go astray. The Book of Allah and my Sunnah. Whatever lies outside of the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, whatever is interpretation, do not bring it into the public life of the village. Hmm? That's your private life. The Book of Allah and the Sunnah as universally accepted is the is the basis of the public life of the village. When a day which is like a week has come to an end, and we will know that because the water in the Sea of Galilee would have dried up. That is the time when these events are now going to take place. The advent of Imam al-Mahdi, Dajjal appearing in a day which is like our day, so we'll see him as a Jew, etc. And the son of Mary coming down. There are some of you who have become a bit uncomfortable with my statement. That I said, it, it would be perhaps within the next 50 years. And I went on to say, I can be wrong. If this statement is uncomfortable to you, I can make another statement which means exactly the same thing. Exactly the same thing. I can say that I expect the Sea of Galilee to dry up in about 50 years. I hope you'd have no objections to that. Huh? But it's the same thing. Because it is when the water in the Sea of Galilee dries up that the son of Mary will come back down. Go and read your Sahih Muslim. Hmm? It is at that time, and go and notice the water level in the Sea of Galilee now. It is lower than it has ever been before in history, and, and Lebanon is about to take water out of the river. What's the name of the river? Litany? Huh? Whatever is the name of the river. <laughs> Lebanon is about to take water out of that river, and Israel is saying, if you do that, we're going to wage war against you. Why? Because that water runs into the Sea of 
Galilee. Yes. And so the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad is now moving to center stage. If I say 50 years and if I say I can be wrong, at least I'm giving you a wake-up call. A wake-up call that you're living in the age of the countdown. So don't be fighting each other over chicken feed. That's what you're doing. In South Africa in particular, the ulama fighting with each other. Sectarian conflicts over chicken feed. While this hugely important subject is so far away from them, it is unbelievable. And as the young men look at the blue movies, the pornography, in the videos and on the internet, what happens inside? قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا Successful will be those who purify themselves. And those who corrupt themselves will end up in the garbage bin. They understand it better than we do. And so they attack you internally. And as you watch these blue movies and this pornography and the internet, you are internally corrupted. And the internal foundations of power are now destroyed. What is the punishment for those who depart from the sunnah of he who used to run races with her in public and who goes in the dark like a rat for a woman? The Prophet ﷺ went in, he was allowed to look into Jahannam and there he saw some men sitting in front of a table laden with meat. There was one plate or platter with rotten, stinking meat. And there was another platter with fresh meat, nicely cooked. And these men were eating from the rotten, stinking meat. When they had the fresh meat nicely cooked, right there in front of them. So he asked Jibra'il alayhi salam, who are these men? And Jibra'il alayhi salam responded and explained, these are the men who left the wives that Allah had made halal for them. And they had gone to women who were haram for them. And so in this life, you live like a rat. And in that life, it's going to be rotten meat.